As vaccinations ramp up across the country and COVID cases trend lower, when will we see a real estate recovery for the major cities? Here with us take is real estate investor and developer Steve Whitkoff, the chairman and CEO of Whitkoff. His company has led the financing, repositioning, and construction of over 75 properties in business districts across the U.S. and abroad. Steve, good to have you here. Obviously, we've got to start with New York City. What is the state of luxury real estate market that you're seeing right now? Hi, Sarah. Thanks for having me today. Uh, the, the, the sales have increased in the last couple of months, so that's something encouraging. I think the jury's out on what's going to happen in the office sector and when people come back and physically occupy offices. And I think real estate is a tough enough business. It has enough risk in it without having the added government risk when people sort of don't understand regulatory policy. And I think that's the most challenging thing facing uh, New York City real estate today. What do you mean, regulatory policy? I would, I would have thought it's just COVID and, and the finances, the higher taxes. I'm, I'm surprised to hear you say it's regulatory issues. Well, regulatory issues, I, I, in, in that grouping, I include taxing policy. So I include inc increased Got mansion tax. I include increased taxing policy that could result in people leaving the state. It's, it's, it's all of those things. And this doesn't just go for New York. It goes for Chicago. It goes for Los Angeles, San Francisco. You're seeing the, that type of dynamic. And on your show, you're interviewing tech people. And the tech people out on the West Coast are talking about that. They're just really unsure about what some of these policies are going to be, and they're choosing to leave and going to states where they have more receptive government. So, so clearly, Steve, that there's lots of factors at, at play that are leading to these, uh, these shifts. What level of price correction in a city like prime Manhattan would put a stop to that? Is it, is it a 10 percent fall in prices that would outweigh everything, or would it need to be much more severe than that? You, you mean for people, for people to begin buying again? Yeah, or people who had been considering moving, whether it was for tax reasons, cost of living reasons, uh, lifestyle choice, urban to rural reasons, would, would decide not to do so. Well, I think, I think that there's already been at least a 25 percent correction in the high-end uh, uh, condo market. That's, that's, a, that's a guidepost for everything else. I think that probably... Every major office landlord is prepared to give significant concessions above what they, they would have given pre-COVID. Uh, and on top of that, reduce rent, probably in the neighborhood of 25%. The face rent, may, they may try to keep it to look the same. But the givebacks at, in, in that lease are going to bring that, that cost of leasing probably down at least 25%. Those are big numbers. The, the hospitality business... Is, has been ravaged in New York City. Uh, I, I, I don't know the exact statistics, but there's, I mean, there's a lot of hotels that are closed in the marketplace. Now, that's not to say that people are not encouraged about where the market goes somewhere in the neighborhood of 2025. But for right now, with those, with those who are managing these properties, it's a tough grind. L lack of foreign tourists? How about lack of foreign buyers, Steve? How, how and when do you see them coming back to the New York real estate market or other major cities? Well, we began to see, we began to see condominiums being sold because pricing came down at least 25 percent. I would suspect that if you're, a con if you're a seller of condominiums today, you've got to increase brokerage commissions and you've got to increase the discounts, and that includes maybe even waiving common charges for some period of time. Same thing with institutional buyers. Institutional buyers are very, very nervous about buying New York City today. I, I believe that to be a maxim. Multiple reasons. They changed rent regulations uh, in the state of New York. I think that it's going to be very, very difficult to, for people to buy rent-regulated apartments in the city of New York. But what people don't understand, Sarah, is that by changing those rent regulations, they changed how these, how these properties are going to be financed. The banks don't want to finance rent-regulated properties anymore. They may not say that out loud, but that's just a simple fact. They don't. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC 
on YouTube. 